Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are once more. It's a new day. It's going to be Wednesday for today. And uh, well, hopefully tonight we're going to have one of those nights when um, we can get to learn and share a lot. Um, for this evening, what I have or what I would like to um, to work on mainly is going to be something called um, sequence adverbs. When we talk about sequence adverbs, we are referring to, um, well, as I said last night, words that we use to talk about a sequential order or a process that happens step by step. So what we do is basically that um, we are trying to order every action in a sequence. Very simple, very straightforward. There's not really like a lot, you know, behind that or, or any extra information behind that. Um, therefore, as we're going to have some extra time, I decided to come with a game or a little bit of a game. I mean, we can refer to it as a game, um, depending on how you guys want to see it. I don't know if you guys have ever seen riddles or have ever practiced riddles in English, but um, for tonight, we are going to be um, learning a little bit about some riddles. When we talk about riddles, it's basically the same as in Spanish uh, when we say adivinanzas. So we're going to be practicing a little bit of that. It is an advanced topic. I'm not going to lie to you. It is something a little bit more advanced, but I would like to get to hear what are your ideas? Because when we talk about riddles, there are always ideas that come to mind. So tonight is going, is, I hope it's going to be one of those nights when you're going to be participating a lot during the class because you're going to have an opportunity to do so. Um, so yeah, we, we will work on that. But before we get there, um, I want to go ahead and ask you, um, well, something, you know, regularly, the question for the day. Today, we're going to go with something very simple. And it's going to be about your favorite drink. I have never really asked this question before. Um, but yeah, so we're going to hear. So what is your favorite drink? And if it's possible, like if you guys want to, you can share, you know, how you came up to um, start enjoying this drink, this specific drink. So that is going to be the question for today. What is your favorite drink? And if you want to share, well, you can share why it is your favorite I mean, you can explain, for example, um, different reasons because of like, if you tried it at a party, like when did you discover it or how specifically you started enjoying said drink? Um, if I was to set the example, I will have to say that my favorite drink is a pineapple juice. It can be either a natural pineapple juice or pineapple juice, the one that is already boxed, the one that you sell by Petit. I like that one. The reason why, well, relatively simple. It's just because pineapples is all, are also my favorite um, fruit. Therefore, I enjoy pineapple juice uh, a lot. So how about you? What will be your case? Let's see. We are going to start with um, Jorge. So you get started for tonight, Jorge. Tell us, what is your favorite drink? And if possible, explain why you like that drink. Good evening. Uh, my favorite drink is uh, coffee and water. All I right. don't drink uh, juice. I don't like. No, oh, okay. Why? Because of the sugar? Yes, I don't uh, sugar. Oh, okay. Great. So you don't consume sugar. Very good. Nice. Very, very nice. Um, Let's hear then from, let me see, Maria Dolores. How about you? What is your favorite drink? Hello. Good Hello evening, there. everyone. Good evening. My favorite drink is coffee with sugar. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, um, lemonade and orange juice. All right. So um, you like citruses and also coffee so we can say that you like um you said coffee with sugar um lemonade and also um orange juice how do you water. like your and water okay cool yeah great how do you like your lemonade do you like it with a little bit of salt or without salt with salt with salt all right yeah i i 
I didn't know it was a trick. I well, it's not like something new for me because I think I learned this when I was like 14 years old, something like that. But since then, I learned that you know having lemonade with a little bit of salt, it's just great. Like I have tried it so many times. It is good, of course, with like the regular way, you know, like when you prepare it without any other ingredients, just the lemons and and uh, and some sugar. But if you add some salt to it, um, you're going to go in a great way. So good, very very good. Uh, moving on, let's hear from um, Romeo. How about you? What will be your opinion on the topic? Um, in fact, um, my favorite drink is coconut water mm. because it is refreshing and the taste is very delicious. And okay. my other favorite drink is the horchata. <laughs> very, the, uh huh. Yes, is the, the horchata. Very for the flavor of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. How do you like your coconut though? Do you like the natural one, the one that you just open the coconut and drink it, or do you like the one that is prepared, like when you have like old coconut meat? And it's blended and, and you prepare it like that. Which one is the, your favorite? Uh, really the natural. I prefer the natural uh, favor. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. <laughs> so in my case, I don't necessarily have a preference for either because I like them both. You know, when I have like coconut milk because <clears throat> or yeah, we normally co call it coconut milk. So when I have coconut milk like natural. I enjoy it, but when I have the one that is um the coconut meat and it's grinded and 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 you have like the the whole thing in it, it's just great as well. So both of them for me are amazing. So very good, very good option. I had uh, actually forgotten about that one. Okay, thank you. All right, great, thank you. Um, moving on, let's hear from. Uh, let me see. Um. Lisbeth, how about you, Lisbeth? What is your favorite drink? Good night. Um, I think my favorite drink is mojito. Uh, I learned how to prepare this drink when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a very fan of alcoholic drinks, but I like this one. All right. So that makes two of us because it's the same for me. Uh, if you ask me on like, well, I have another one, but that's basically something that is unknown here because i have actually never heard about that drink here in el salvador it's one called the uh, long island long island iced tea um it has a mix of many many things it's a heavy cocktail uh it's my favorite i have never actually tried it here in el salvador if you guys know where i can get it let me know because i'm desperate for one um but yeah <laughs> the thing is that my second favorite, I think, will be that the same, mojitos, because they are very refreshing. Like the, ah, let me look it up, because I don't remember how to say yerba buena. Give me one second. Porque justo le iba a decir también a, a Dolores que a mí me gusta la limonada con yerba buena, pero olvidé cómo se decía. Um, let me see. Here we go. The grass or no? Mm, no, it's peppermint. Oh. Yeah, peppermint. Es que good grass sería literal, pero en este caso es peppermint. Es que ese, ese sería el, el, el nombre de la, um, de la hierba buena, es peppermint. Eh, es diferente, <coughs> un poquito diferente a, al mint. O sea, si ustedes han tenido eh, plantas de menta y hierba buena, sabrán que son muy, muy similares. O sea, se parecen bastante, incluso en la forma de las hojas y todo. Pero el sabor que la hierba buena te deja es un poquito peculiar, o sea, como que tiene, no sé, cierto, no sé si acidez o algo diferente a la menta, o sea, la menta es completamente refrescante, en cambio la hierbabuena tiene algo ahí que es un poco distinto, entonces se llama peppermint, sí. So yeah, I like my lemonade with peppermint and a little bit of salt, and in the case of the mojitos, the same thing, you know, they have, it's basically like a, like an adult lemonade, because they do use peppermint, they do also use um, some limes or lemons and, well, other things to prepare the beverage. But good, very good. Moving on. Let's hear now from um, Laura. How about you, Laura? What will be your favorite drink? Good, good evening, everyone. In evening. my case, 
I love in the coffee. <laughs> and chocolate. And, eh, no sé cómo se dice, fermentado. El fresco de tamarindo fermentado. Fermented. Ese es, es una Fermented. friendly word. Uh -huh. So it would be tamarindo. 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 Uh -huh. Fermented tamarindo. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how you say it. All right. Do you like your chocolate with or without milk? Mm, with milk. Ah, okay. You pass the test. Mm -hmm. Pass the test. <laughs> I like them both ways. I like them either either or. Chocolate is basically just an amazing uh, hot beverage. But if I can have a hot chocolate with milk, my life just goes 10 times better. So, yeah. You know, that is something that happened to me once. It was, I think it was in the course from October to November last year that uh, my students were very mad at me. They got really mad because I, I told them that I don't like coffee. Like, I drink coffee. Yes, I do drink coffee. It's not like I'm that special unicorn. But... um. I don't enjoy it. Like, I don't find the point. Like, for example, sometimes I'm having coffee here when I have classes from 9 to 10, which is, well, more tiring. And and um, how can we call it? Like, yeah, just tiring. Uh, sometimes I just get a cup of coffee, but it just doesn't do anything to me. Like, it doesn't take the, the, the um, sleepiness away. It doesn't take the tiredness away. It doesn't do anything. Like, I'm just... The same, you know, I know that a lot of people say that coffee is like a magical drink, like they feel more energized after they have a cup of coffee. But maybe because you guys add, if you like the one, you know, the the, um, the fast prepare one, like Cafe Listo, maybe you add three uh, or four different sachets. But I don't know. In my case, I have had so many times um, different kinds of coffee and no coffee has ever done any effect on me. I actually get a better effect from drinking chocolate because I just feel happy. Um, so yeah, but good, very good. Very good to know that you like your chocolate with milk. Uh, moving on, Luis Eduardo, how about you? What is your favorite drink? Oh, you're a mute, you're a mute. Okay, sorry. There we go. Uh, my favorite drink is coffee, um, coconut water mm -hmm. okay so coffee and coconut water um saben que en eso hay un debate de hecho porque muchas personas eh, o sea el debate es entre cuál es la forma más apropiada de llamarlo si coconut water o coconut milk porque um, muchos lo llaman o sea bueno yo uso la, el, el término coconut milk porque lo he escuchado más a menudo eh, pero también tiene sentido que se llame coconut water porque es Claro, ¿verdad? Casi como el color del agua. Ahora, el problema viene de que hay algunas especies de cocos que a veces entregan el, el agua, o sea, no sé si ustedes alguna vez la han probado, que se ve ya, o sea, ¿cómo seríamos? Lechosa, o sea, no, le, no lechosa en mal sentido, sino como eh, blancuzca. Como blanca. Ajá, como sí. blancuzca. Entonces, por eso eh, se utiliza, ¿verdad? El coconut milk. ¿Sí, Ruth? Es más que todo cuando el coco ya está... Maduro, Vas, que viejito. ya la comidita está bien, bien, bien durita. Uh -huh. El agua tiende a ser un poco más, como, un poco más lechosa. Uh -huh. Porque no Entonces... sé si, no sé si, no sé si es cuando el coco está más tiernito, que da el agua más clarita, que la da así como lechosa, porque como tiene moco, y uh -huh. cuando ya está bien duro, creo que la da clarita, clarita, porque ya la carnita está dura y ya solo queda el agua. Todo está recogido. Creo que así Ajá, uh -huh. entonces imagino que ya para el caso de que si le gusta el coco así tiernito, es como coconut milk. Y cuando le gusta el coco, el agua de coco así clarita, clarita, sí podría coconut ser water. Co coconut water. Uh -huh. Ajá. Pero igual, son dos términos que se utilizan como de forma intercambiada, o sea, no es que uno esté mejor que el otro, o sea, simplemente creo que ese, ese es uno de esos casos en el inglés donde va más dado a la preferencia, porque... O sea, no hay como una necesariamente una tremenda aclaración. Se dice que, por ejemplo, a veces el utilizar coconut milk es más con eh, el agua de coco procesada, porque si sea, ustedes han visto o han comprado alguna vez el agua de coco procesada, normalmente se ve mucho más blanca que la natural, ¿verdad? Eh, pero, o sea, la terminología, como les digo, si ustedes quieren decir coconut water, if you feel okay to say it that way, Go ahead. If you feel better saying coconut milk, you can say it that way. Pero creo que quien deberíamos preguntarle es a María, porque miren, ella está ahí en un montón de palmas de coco, así que tal vez sabe. 
All right. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing. Um, Luis, moving on. Osmin, how about you? What is your favorite drink? Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, uh, my favorite drink is coffee and uh, so so the coconut. No sé si así dice, pero el refresco, sí, en sí, no, no la hago. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it would be... Uh... Soda, soda coconut. ¿En qué, ¿En qué presentación? ¿El que venden, el que venden así como ya en, en botella? No, no, que uno prepara y lo licúa. Ah, no, ese sería más, más bien como un coconut juice. Ah, ajá, coconut, coconut juice, juice, como jugo de coco, digamos. Porque, ah, ajá, sí. va preparado y todo. Sí, sería más como coconut juice. Sí, sí. It's, more, it's more natural drink. For me, yeah. for me it's delicious. Same for me. Same for me. I was hearing that before. Like, I mean, I enjoy them both ways. Like, if I can have a coconut straight up, like, as it is, I enjoy it. But if I can have it that other way with some cinnamon, some sugar, and, you know, the uh, the grinded meat, I feel just so much better even. So, yeah, very good. Thank you very much for sharing. Más vale que a ustedes solo les conté y les dije que antes me había linchado porque decía que no me gustaba el café porque veo que aquí a la mayoría les gusta también. Así que ahora hacerles la historia. Vamos a ver. Uh, let's hear from Ruth. How about you? What would be your favorite drink? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my favorite drinks are <laughs> uh, micheladas. Mm. Uh, okay, now we're talking. Everything, <laughs> everything about coffee. Because uh, about three years ago, I worked uh Ben's Coffee, mm -hmm. and I worked at Volcano, and I choose the grains of coffee. I uh, empacar. Uh, packed. I uh, packed uh, a coffee, and I uh, me nutri de, de lo del café, creo uh -huh. que. Hace, uh, hace mucho tiempo con el café y, y creo que llegué a amarlo tanto que no puedo pasar un día sin tomar café. <laughs> okay. Que me enfermo. Si... <laughs> okay. How many cups of coffee do you drink a day? When I was uh, work there. Uh... Y Romeo acordándose, yo creo que como cinco, dice Romeo. En <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> in, in 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 that work, uh, era como que casi obligatorio tomar café. You eh, had it right porque, there, like it was your water, basically. Sí, porque el, el, el catador de café era el dueño y él era muy, muy este, delicado con el café. Entonces, mm. ahí se, se escogía, se tostaba, se pacaba. Yo tenía que conocer todo lo que era sobre el café, lo de altura, qué tipo de grano era, cómo era el tueste, cosas así. Entonces, lo acostumbrábamos a tomar sin azúcar. Ahí uh -huh. me acostumbraron a tomar café sin azúcar porque como era café de altura, si uno le ponía azúcar, le quitaba absolutamente todas las notas que traía el, el grano del café. Entonces, ahí me, me empapé tanto el café que, o sea, hoy, porque pues sí, no, a veces no hay de otra, toca el, el instantáneo, Listo. pero pero ahí <risa> sí tomábamos café como que súper rico y en diferentes métodos de... de de extracción en mm. prensa francesa, en B60, en Clever, en... Ay, no olvido cuál era el otro método, pero sí eran como diferentes métodos para resaltar ciertas cosas del café, ¿va? porque cada método resaltaba cierta característica del grano del café. Entonces ahí me hice... Ya me gustaba, porque mi familia es cafetera a morir. Uh -huh. Mi mamá se toma unas cuatro tazas de café al día, unas cinco... Entonces ya como que ya éramos amantes, ya las tardes no eran nada sin café y pancito. Entonces me fue acostumbrando y cuando llegué ahí fue peor porque ya no podía pasar un día sin tomar por lo menos unas tres tazas de café. Wow. Y como ahí el café era gratis, del grano uh -huh. que uno quisiera se lo, se lo preparaban o uno lo preparaba porque también estuve como, como barista. Uh -huh. Entonces era bien interesante estar haciéndose uno el propio, eh, eh, o sea, el café va. Entonces sí, era como que el postrecito, un tiramisú con una tacita de café así suavecita. Bien, qué rico. Creo que ahí 
my favorite drink is coffee. Coffee. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can tell. <laughs> I don't know how, but I think I can tell. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, I, mean, I, uh, I want your work. Yeah. You, you, I mean, so Maria wants to have your, your previous job. So very good. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I mean, that's what I was referring to last time, you know, that uh, we always have those opportunities to share something uh, or, or to share some things that we have um, that we have done and we have learned before. So very good. That sounds very nice. I have seen a lot of like um, the coffee culture in our, in our country. And uh, I have also seen that in the last few years, it's growing back again, like more people and more people are getting interested in the Salvadoran coffee once again. So hopefully we are going to be able to recover some ground, you know, from what we have lost in the last few decades in terms of, um, well, the quality of our coffee. But uh, yeah, it sounds great. And um, I don't know, maybe one day you can teach us how to prepare, you know, our own coffee with Cafe Listo. How can we turn Cafe Listo into a gourmet coffee? Nah, just kidding. We, we, that's basically impossible. Um, but yeah, very good. Sounds great. Um, now, how about the micheladas? What is your favorite drink? No, just kidding. Uh, siguiente, let's see. We are going to hear from Alexa. How about you? What is your favorite drink? Actually, I think I have four favorite drinks. All right. Um, strawberry milkshake. I love it. And chocolate, horchata, and lemonade. Oh, okay. Well, the lemonade is with so. Sorry? With soda. With salt? Oh, with, with soda. soda. With soda. Yes. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, so it. lemonade soda. Great. Yeah, that sounds great. Actually, you made me remind that, uh, or made me remember, sorry, made me remember that my favorite drink of all time or something that makes me go crazy is the naranjada. I don't know if you guys have ever been to, to Guatemala, have ever tried naranjadas. They sell, you know, the, the, the bottle of naranjadas. Um, it was like, I don't know, eight years ago, seven years ago, the first time I went to Guatemala and I tried naranjadas. And uh, from that time, I just know that every single time that we're going to have visit from our family from Guatemala, I am always asking for at least two naranjadas. They sell them here in Super Selectos, but they sell them in a, in a six pack. And in that six pack, you have two Super Colas, two lemon sodas, one uh, grape soda, and one naranjada so it's six sodas only for one naranjada so i almost never uh buy them because the other thing is that they are very shaked um what i mean the, the the ones they sell at super selectos are very shaked so they don't have the same flavor but yeah that is also one of my favorite drinks the naranjada uh and lemonade with soda it's also a very very good drink um how about your chocolate how do you like your chocolate with or without milk well I always have milk on my house, so it's unnecessary okay. to have with milk. All right. Very good. Very nice. Then uh, the last we are going to hear from tonight is going to be Melissa. How about you? What is your favorite drink or your favorite drinks? Uh, hi. And my favorite drink is coffee too. <laughs> And especially the cappuccino because the combination with the whipped milk is delicious for me. All right, very good. So yeah, it's it's normal, you know, like many people in the world, not only here in El Salvador, but in the world in general, um, enjoy drinking coffee. So yeah, I don't see that, you know, that it's it's a surprise to see that you guys like coffee. Um, but still, try other things. Nah, just kidding. I don't know, honestly. I I have I have just never been a really good um coffee drinker. Like I do enjoy um watching, I mean what I do enjoy drinking coffee. I enjoy drinking coffee, like as you said, Ruth, in the afternoon with a little bit of bread or, or um pastry. But uh oh esa palabra se la voy a enviar. No sé si ustedes saben cómo decir cuando hablan del pan dulce, ¿cómo dirían pan dulce ustedes? Sweet bread. Ah, ya veo que les gustan las traducciones literales a ustedes. Por ahí me dijeron antes también <laughs> good herb para la hierbabuena, pero no. 
El, o sea, sweet bread es algo que utilizamos y se puede entender. Alguien puede entender que ustedes están refiriendo a pan dulce, o sea, literal. Pero la forma que utilizamos para referirnos a, a ese tipo de... O sea, la palabra general, ¿verdad? Porque cada uno de los, de los diferentes panes va a tener su nombre. Entonces ya ahí no me puedo meter. Panadero, I'm not. Eh, solo les puedo decir quizá croissant, pero pasando ahí ya no. Este, pero el punto es que el, la palabra que utilizamos para referirnos a el pan dulce, y me refiero casi que a todo lo que sea pan dulce, eh, será pastry. Me refiero, o hago énfasis en lo de pan dulce, porque el pastel, sí, también va a ser incluido en esto. Um, a veces, y una vez me pasó, una persona me decía, y que no se decía bakery, y yo como, no, hay diferencias, porque bakery en sí se refiere a la panadería, ¿sí? Entonces, pastry es el nombre que utilizamos para hablar acerca del pan dulce, o sea, básicamente todas las cosas que sean dulces se incluyen harina. E incluso algunas personas a veces llegan a incluir hasta planes y cosas así dentro del de de, pastry. Hasta ahí yo no creo que llegue, pero eh, así, ¿verdad? Vamos a identificarlo, ¿sí? Pastry. Muy bien. So, sequence adverbs. Yes. Sería como, como decir que es como un postre, algo así. Similar, o sea, nosotros lo asimilamos así, ¿verdad? Porque como decimos postre, la palabra postre es la que utilizamos para hablar acerca de cosas dulces, lo asimilamos así. Pero no necesariamente, o sea, pastry es una palabra muy independiente del, del significado que tenemos nosotros. Creo que incluso nuestra palabra de postre, creo que deriva de la palabra pastry. O sea, creo que es como el caso, el caso contrario, creo. Pero eso tendría que leer, que leer acerca de la historia de esa palabra para saber cuál deriva de cuál. Eh, pero creo que postre deriva incluso de la palabra pastry. Porque, como les digo, o sea, pastry es como bien general para referirse a cualquier clase de, um, de cosa que sea dulce, ¿sí? Entonces, o sea, comida que sea dulce. Um, puede ser incluso, o sea, el hecho de que ustedes tengan un pan francés y le ponen un poquito de miel adentro, you have turned your pan francés into pastry. Y memorias, ¿verdad? Memorias. Algunos ya días no se acordaban de que el pan francés es rico con miel. Ahora acuérdense. Y yo me acordé hace como una semana porque hay miel en la casa, porque andamos enfermos todos y me comí un pan francés con miel y me acordé cuando estaba pequeño. Y si nunca lo han probado, try it. Ok, so, um, saben que de verdad si no lo han hecho, pruébenlo y me cuentan mañana a ver cómo les va, porque bien rico se siente cuando se pone eh, cristalizado el pan. I don't know why or how that happens, but it's enjoyable. Muy bien, eh, vamos ahora a esto entonces. When we use sequence adverbs, it's going to be mainly when we are providing instructions. Like if, let's say, for example, you just bought a new phone and you are the kind of person who likes to read the instructions before using the device, um, you're going to have to follow a sequence. That means that you are going to be respecting an order or um, a series of steps. So that is what we mean when we talk about sequence adverbs. Now, which ones are they? They are not really that many, okay? Because we're not going to use a ton of sequence, ad sequence adverbs. The main ones that we're going to use are going to be these ones that I'm going to be pointing at in just a second over here. Um, this one's first. This one it will be, of course, the first one you need to know. First. Sí, eso se refiere a decir primero, ¿verdad? En el, en el ritmo, en el orden de las indicaciones, first sería primero. So, first. Then we can use second, ¿sí? si ustedes quieren hacerlo de esa forma. Pero importante es, cuando la lista de cosas que vamos a hacer solo, solo incluye, perdón, alrededor de tres o cuatro puntos, podemos utilizarlo con ese tipo de números. O sea, podemos decir first, second, third, and fourth. Sí, en, cuando son cuatro. Si son ya cinco o más pasos, ahí es donde entran estos sequence adverbs. Ok. Entonces, los números, que, if I remember well, they're going to be ordinary. Let's see. Um, ordinal numbers. Yes. Yeah, ordinal numbers. So, when you guys need to use those, or, or when you use the ordinal numbers, It's going to be only when you have four different steps. So you go step one, second, I mean, first, second, third, and fourth. So, so for those 
four steps is when you use the ordinal numbers. If you have more than uh, four steps, then you switch into using uh, the sequence adverbs that are going to be like this. First, that is almost never going to be taken away. You're always going to be using first. Then you may use then, which is basicamente decir después, ¿sí? Um, after that, you use next. Next will, me, will translate in Spanish to siguiente, ¿sí? Pero podemos entenderla como después. O sea, que eh, se traduce de una forma, pero también tenemos, ¿verdad? Esas áreas grises en el inglés donde podemos entender las palabras de una forma distinta. So you can say next como después o siguiente. Uh, then we have after that. After that. When you use after that, it means um, después de eso, ¿sí? After that, después de eso. Uh, and then we have finally. Ok, este, eh, lo que va a pasar más que todo, cuando tú tienen una lista de, um, de instrucciones así como muy larga, es que vamos a estar repitiendo y repitiendo aquí y allá las instrucciones. Otra cosa que se puede hacer, y que de hecho es como lo más común, ¿verdad?, que se llega a ver, es que eh, simplemente o se reduce la utilización, o sea, se anula la utilización de los sequence adverbs, tal vez usamos dos, tres y ahí ya para nada, o si no, vamos simplemente eh, cambiándolo, ¿verdad? Usamos uno aquí, uno allá, entonces, pero lo más común que ustedes se van a encontrar principalmente, como les decía antes, como en manuales de uso de diferentes dispositivos, será que eh, le vamos a ir a, eh, a eliminar, perdón, vamos a eliminar por completo la utilización de sequence adverbs. O sea, lo que va a pasar será que ustedes eh, simplemente van a leer las instrucciones. En lugar de decir next spread peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast, solo sería eh, ahí un punto, tal vez un número uno, sin ninguna palabra, y solo diga, ¿verdad? Spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. Si no me creen, vayan y vean cualquier manual que tengan tirado por ahí de algo que simplemente decidieron, ah, yo sé usarlo, lo agarraron y empezaron a usarlo. Entonces, si el manual eh, quedó tirado en la caja, Revísenlo y se van a dar cuenta que no siempre se utiliza. O sea, los sequence adverbs son importantes, sí, porque son importantes cuando estamos tratando de dar una indicación o una serie de, de, de pasos a seguir y debemos explicarlos, ¿verdad? Sí, básicamente con ese orden lógico, pero eh, no son tan útiles con listas muy largas. O sea, si vamos a hablar acerca de cosas que incluyen un montón de pasos, es mejor simplemente dejar de usarlos, ¿sí? O sea, omitir la utilización de los sequence adverbs, porque sería muy complicado estar a cada ratito, ¿verdad? First, then. Sorry, y así. Eh, pero los dos que casi nunca van a estar eh, eliminados serán first y finally. Estos dos casi siempre, aunque en el medio no se utilice ningún sequence adverb, eh, ustedes se van a encontrar con que están por ahí, ¿verdad? Están siendo utilizados tanto el first como el finally. Pero bueno. Como les digo, no es nada del otro mundo, es algo muy sencillo, o sea, no, no, no creo que sea algo que nos vaya a complicar tanto, ¿verdad?, a la hora de usarlo. El ejemplo que tenemos acá es acerca de una receta, how to prepare French toast. So, what we need for this recipe is going to be three tablespoons of peanut butter, something that we almost never eat, uh, one banana, mashed banana, mm, two slices of bread, two tablespoons of butter uh, melted, sí, o sea, melted butter. Then, the first thing, mix the peanut butter and mashed banana together. So that is the first thing you have to do. You have to mix the peanut butter and the mashed banana together. Then, uh, lightly toast the slices of bread. So, lightly toast the slices of bread. Very good. Uh, next, spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. Spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. After that, close the sandwich and put it on in a pan with melted butter. So close the sandwich and put it in a pan with melted butter. And finally, fry the bread until it's brown on both sides. Aquí si se fijan, tenemos también eh, las imágenes que representan, ¿verdad? Lo que sucedió, the first option is going to be this one. You have to mix uh, the peanut butter and the mashed banana. The second option is going to be this one over here. When you guys get to uh, toast or lightly toast um, the bread, then it's going to be this one. When you spread uh, the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast, 
Now, after that, it's going to be basically just, um, well, two steps in a row, which are going to be closing the sandwich or, you know, making the sandwich and putting um, the whole sandwich in a pan with melted butter and then just frying it until we see that both sides of the sandwich uh, have turned brown. So basically, that's it. That's how you provide an instruction. Si esa es la forma en la que eh, vamos a dar instrucciones o vamos a decir verdad cómo vamos a desarrollar cierta actividad. Bueno, ¿alguna duda que tengamos con estos, con los sequence adverbs? Porque ahorita empieza la parte en la que los voy a hacer, o me gustaría más bien saber, um, que vamos a estar pensando bastante. So, any questions that you guys may have? Seems like there are no questions. Then we are going to move into this over here. A ver. Ahora sí. So, this is riddle, riddle. Estamos hablando ahora acerca de adivinanzas. Sí. En este caso, quiero que participen. Quiero que, que se quiten la pena. Básicamente, esta actividad la, la quiero desarrollar para eso, ¿verdad? Para todos aquellos que a veces se me pasan por alto eh, pedirles que participen en las actividades del principio o en, en cualquier actividad, ¿verdad? Y, y no tienen el chance. Esta noche quiero que se sacudan ese miedo, que salgan de, 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 de eso y vamos a estar participando básicamente todos. Quiero que piensen y que la idea que tengan me la dejen eh, saber y de esa forma vamos a ir viendo qué tan buenos podemos ser con las adivinanzas en inglés, ¿sí? O sea, cualquier idea, ¿verdad? Que ustedes tengan. Ahora, tenemos la primera. Eh, la primera solo va a servir como ejemplo, así que no se preocupen, en esta la vamos a... Solo para que vean también más o menos cuál será el tono, ¿verdad? Que van a llevar las adivinanzas. So the first one is... What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? See, what time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? Um, if you guys can stop guess, start guessing, sorry, you may guess, for example, that, uh, um, I don't know, it's 12 o'clock. Or maybe it's late at night because the elephant fell asleep. Or maybe it's just the morning because the elephant was walking and he just fell on the fence. But... If we read once again the question, what time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? The answer to this is going to be time to fix the fence. ¿Sí? ¿Qué hora es cuando un elefante se sienta en una barda o en un cerco? Pues es hora de arreglar, de arreglar el cerco. ¿Sí? Ya el elefante lo arruinó, so it's time to fix the fence. Muy bien. Vamos a ver ahora. Esta sí. Esta será la siguiente. Uh, number two. What is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? What is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un joyero y un carcelero? En español esto no va a tener ningún sentido, pero en inglés les prometo que sí. So, what is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? ¿Alguna idea? Any, idea? any question? Any, any ideas? Sí, hoy quiero que produzcan ustedes. What ideas do you guys have about this? What is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? Uh -huh. No creo que no tengan una idea, lo que sea que se los venga a la mente. So, what is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? Al menos espero que los esté haciendo pensar en inglés y no estén pensando en español. ¿Cuál será la diferencia entre un, un joyero y un carcelero? So, tell me. No vamos a pasar de esto hasta que me digan al, men al menos unas dos ideas. So, what is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? The way of the right. Okay, the way they are written, that is a nice idea. Yeah, the way they are written. O sea, la forma en la cual están escritas. Muy bien, es una, una buena idea. A jeweler and a jailer. Um, anyone else? Any other idea you guys might have? What is the difference between a jeweler and a jailer? Who care for jeweler? Sorry? Who cares for jewelry? Joyas. Oh, okay. So the jeweler is the one who takes care of jewels. Or, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Ahora, teniendo eso en cuenta, vamos a ver. A jeweler sells watches and a jeweler watches sells. See? A jeweler sells watches and a jeweler watches sells. Yo sé cómo les dije. <laughs> En, en español esto no tiene ningún sentido porque si yo les leo, o sea, en español que les digo, ¿verdad? Un joyero vende relojes y un carcelero eh, mira o cuida celdas. 
O sea, eso no tiene sentido, pero eso es lo que significa y en inglés, claro que sí lo tiene. A jeweler sells watches and a jeweler watches sells. Sí, aquí es básicamente donde se encuentra, ¿verdad? El juego de, palabra, eh, de palabras. Sales es el verbo pues, de vender y watches en este caso sería eh, la, el noun, sí, el noun que se utiliza para hablar acerca de los, de los relojes, ¿verdad? Y luego, en este otro lado, tenemos que watches va a funcionar como verbo, o sea, que se refiere a verbo en tercera persona para referirnos a que está vigilando, y sells se va a referir a las celdas. Entonces, eh, eso básicamente es el juego de palabras en este caso. A jeweler sells watches and a, and a jailer watches sells. Muy bien. La idea no necesariamente es que adivinemos al 100%, ¿se adivinan alguna? Amazing. Pero la idea no necesariamente es que las adivinemos. La idea es que tratemos de practicar e eh, expresar nuestras ideas. Así que vamos a ver, la siguiente. What can be hold in your right hand, but never in your left hand? What can be hold in your right hand, but never in your left hand? ¿Qué cosa puede ser sostenida en tu mano eh, derecha, pero nunca en tu mano izquierda? ¿Qué cosa? What can it be? What can be hold in your right hand, but never in your left hand? My left hand. Very good. Uh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, your left hand. Because you can never hold your left hand on your left hand. O sea, ¿qué cosa nunca podemos sostener en nuestra mano izquierda? Pues básicamente nuestra mano izquierda. So nice. Very good. Very, very good. Muy bien. Si estuviéramos más cerca ya del final de, de del final, ¿cómo se llama? De, del curso, tal vez les ofreciera plata, pero todavía no. Voy a empezar a perder de muy bien. I okay. was thinking in the fingers. Mm, okay, yeah, also, yeah, very, very similar. It, uh, it is related. <laughs> I know, teacher, uh, another one. Uh -huh. It's something exactly, but I don't know. It's mixed up. It's what can be called in your left hand, but not in your right hand. What is it? The right elbow. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's one from Facebook. Yeah, what can yeah. be holding your in your left hand but never in your right hand? Your right elbow. Yeah, because you basically can never get to your elbow from your hand. Yeah, very good. Until you are uh Mr. Uh, incredible, maybe then. Maybe just then. But uh a regular human cannot hold. Y todos intentando, eh, no llego. <laughs> ya casi llego. Así como cuando los que se pueden lamer la nariz, I mean, I cannot. I cannot lick my nose with Some people are like ahí con la, con la lengua, ¿verdad? Intentando todo el rato. But good, very good. Okay, moving on. The next one. What can you catch but not throw? What can you catch but not throw? Esta es una, es una riddle muy, 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 muy relacionada con la cultura, ¿verdad? Del inglés. O sea, no necesariamente solo la cultura del inglés, sino como que la vida eh, en inglés. Cosas que se, que se explican, que se viven. A menudo eh, en inglés. So, what can you catch but not throw? ¿Qué cosa se puede cachar? Sí, pero no lanzar. So, what can you catch? The cold. Very good. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can catch a cold, but you cannot throw a cold. Sí, o sea, se, se puede cachar, se, se utiliza este verbo que nosotros entendemos como cachar, pero um, como diría buen niño estadounidense es garar, sí. O sea, garas una, una, una cold, una, una gripe. Um, pero, sí, catch. When can you catch but not throw? O sea, esto, you can catch a cold, but you cannot throw a cold. All right, next one. What kind of band never plays music? What kind of band never plays music? ¿Qué tipo de banda nunca toca música? Bad Bunny. Okay, <laughs> that's an idea. Yeah, he's just a singular singer, but good idea. Yeah, what kind? The band never plays music. Any other ideas? Any other ideas on what kind of band never plays music? Electric band. Mm, okay, an electric band. You may say that. Yes, you may say that an electric band never plays music. Okay, one more. One more idea. Let's see. Anyone else who has... An idea of what kind of band never plays the music. The exercise band? 
All right. That is very close to the actual answer. Rubber band. Ajá. Uh -huh. It's a rubber band. Alexa oh, la okay. está buscando. Mira, Alexa ya está... En... Sí, es que así me pasó la vez pasada. Estaba con un men ahí que ya estaba en la página donde había encontrado What? esto. No. Ah. Goodness, no. Okay, so it, you're only good at it then. Great. So yeah, it's a rubber band. Sí. Estaba muy cerca lo que había dicho Romeo, an exercise band, pero no, it's a rubber band. O sea, um, una rubber band es básicamente como un, un nulito, ¿verdad? Un nule que se utiliza pues, para diferentes cosas. No le voy a decir solo para... Um, para atarse el cabello, sino que pues también eh, muchas cosas que vienen empaquetadas vienen con rubber bands. Entonces, um, yeah, a rubber band is a kind of band that never plays music. Very nice. Next one up, we have what has many teeth but cannot bite. Esta está sencilla. What has many teeth but cannot bite. ¿Sí? ¿Qué cosa tiene muchos dientes pero no puede morder? The corn. Mm -hmm. oh. It's a comb. A comb. It has many teeth, but it cannot bite. O sea, tiene muchos dientes, pero no nos puede morder. Este es un eh, peine o cepillo, depending on how you guys refer to it. So, yes, a comb. Great. Very good. Moving on. What has one eye, but can't see? What has one eye, but can't see? ¿Qué cosa tiene un ojo pero no puede ver? My feet. Your feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that is a nice detail. Very good. <laughs> you should check that out. You should get that check from a doctor. <laughs> okay. Any other idea? What has one eye but can't see? Tiene un ojo pero no puede ver. All right, seems yeah. like, huh? A needle. A needle. Very good. It's a needle. See, ¿sí? una aguja. A needle. Oh. Very <laughs> good. Very, very nice. So, yes, a needle is something that has one eye, but it actually cannot see. So, great. Very good, Eduardo. Moving on. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? This one is a tricky one. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? ¿Sí? ¿Qué cosa puede viajar por todo el mundo sin dejar su esquina? There is something that can travel all over the world without leaving its corner. Any ideas? Mm-hmm. Something that can travel all around the world without leaving its corner. No ideas? At least one idea. ¿Qué se les viene a la mente al pensar eso? ¿Qué cosa puede viajar por todo el mundo sin dejar su esquina? Muy bien. Bueno, parece que no tenemos ideas. Esta es una muy interesante. Al menos a mí me, me lo pareció. A stamp. O sea, una estampilla. Sí. It's something that can travel all over the world without leaving its corner. O sea, que puede viajar por todo el mundo sin dejar la misma esquina, ¿verdad? Donde fue colocada. So, yeah. A stamp. Uh, moving on, I think I have at least two more. So, let's see. What kind of room has no doors or windows? What kind of room has no doors or windows? Esta está más sencilla. Esta creo que sí podemos tener alguna que otra opinión, ¿verdad? What kind of room has no doors or windows? ¿Qué clase de cuarto? Sí, si lo vamos a entender así. En español, claro, si lo vamos a traducir, nos confunde un poco, pero igual. ¿Qué clase de cuarto no tiene paredes, no tiene, perdón, eh, puertas ni ventanas? What kind of room has no doors or windows? Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Maybe we can get an idea, I don't know, from Sarah or maybe Ruth. Any ideas? What kind of room has no doors or windows? A mushroom. Very good. Uh, very, very nice. It's a mushroom. See? A mushroom. Es el tipo de, pues, un hongo, básicamente. Pero aquí otra vez, ¿verdad? Este es el juego de palabras. Room over here, room over here. So, yes. 
A mushroom is a kind of room that has no doors or windows. All right, moving on. This one is one of my favorites. What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? ¿Qué cosa tienen en común Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh? ¿Qué cosa creen que puede hacer? ¿Hm? They friend. The little friend, I don't know how. Or the o name. Okay. The, uh, Christopher Robin? I think that's the uh, one. Oh, Piglet. Yeah, uh, Piglet. Piglet. Okay, might be. It might be an idea. That's an idea. Yeah, Piglet might be something that they have in common. Very good. Any other idea? What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Think about it. Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh. What do they have in common? The honey. Sorry? Honey? That they like honey. That is a good idea as well. Yeah, because they like honey. That can be something. Um, one more. One more idea. What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Ruth, what do you think? What can be something that Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Teacher, I'm thinking, but I don't know Alexander Great. <laughs> you don't know Alexander the Great? No. It's, it's a character from history. He, I mean, he's supposed to have been one of the greatest kings in the Mesopotamian Empire, I think. It's not king, it's a, like an emperor, but yeah. Yeah, that's that's like the idea behind Alexander the Great. He used to be like a ruler. Um, so what do the what do what does he and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Bueno, vamos a ver. Entonces, in this case, it would be this: their middle names. Sí, sus nombres del medio, o sea, su, su segundo nombre, o sus, su, ya, yeah, sus nombres del medio, digamos, su segundo nombre. Alexander, they're great, and Winnie, they're poo. So, I, I was thinking about it. Too. Yeah, it's their, their, their middle names. That's what they have in common. All right. Now, <clears throat> esta, this is a fun one as well. I hope you guys are going to get this one because this one is not really that tricky. Before Mount Everest, what was discovered? What was the highest mountain in the world? Esta no se la voy a traducir. Before Mount Everest was discovered, what was the highest mountain in the world? Think about that one. Mm. Before Mount Everest was discovered, what was the highest mountain in the world? The same mountain. Um, that no. is an idea. That is an idea. Yes, might be possible. Any other ideas? By the way, thank you, Mayra, for participating. Los demás como que ya se están durmiendo. <laughs> what do you guys think? Piensen, piensen y díganme. Les dije, o sea, el reto era que, que hablaran, que participaran con las ideas que se les vengan a la mente. So before Mount Everest was discovered, what was the highest mountain in the world? Ahorita casi, casi se las digo en español, fíjense. Fuji Mount? Hmm? A Fuji Mount in Japan? Ah, the Fuji Mount. All right, yeah, that's another good idea. Fuji is very tall, but I think, I think it wasn't Fuji. No, I think it wasn't Fuji. Before... Mount Everest was discovered. What was the highest mountain in the world? Una idea the, más. K11 in Pakistan. <laughs> I don't know, teacher. Okay, so maybe, but no. Hey, que, que se escuchó eso. Maybe, but no. No, it's not that. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it was still Mount Everest. It was just wasn't discovered yet. Sí, o sea, antes que fuese descubierto, siempre era el Monte Everest, el, no fue construido, diferente cuando hablamos acerca de que algo es construido, pero antes que fuese descubierto el Monte Everest, ¿cuál era el más alto? Siempre seguía siendo el, mon el Monte Everest, solo que no lo habíamos descubierto. Alexa, tell me. I had that one on my mind, but I wasn't the day that Mount Everest. Yeah. I was thinking that. Yeah, it's basically the same thing because, I mean, what we refer here to is basically it was discovered. Like, for example, um, if you say that uh, before water was discovered, 
Um, we were H2O. No, 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 no me voy a complicar con otra así porque sería muy extraño. Pero el punto es que estamos hablando simplemente de um, el descubrimiento de. O sea, por ejemplo, muchas personas a veces se preguntan, ¿y dónde estaba América antes de que fuese descubierta? Pues ahí donde está ahora, solo que no había sido descubierta por el resto del mundo, claro. Entonces, yeah, it's basically the same thing. So before Mount Everest was discovered, where, what was the highest mountain in the world? It was still Mount Everest. Muy bien, denme un momento, voy a rescatar un par más porque tengo otras por aquí, pero a ver, vamos a ver. Let me see, I think, yeah, here is where I have them. Ok, vamos a ver. Voy a rescatar unas, unas cuatro más, solo para poder darle, eh, just so we can finish uh, this thing. All right, so here we go. Ustedes han salido más rápido de lo que yo pensaba. So, very good job, actually. Muy bien, ya estamos. Um, I'm coming back to you guys in a sec. Here we go. So, once again, at it. Uh, let me start showing the screen and there we go. Uh oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Here we have it. All right. So, it was a steel Mount Everest. Very nice. Now, here we have another one. What is the end of everything? What is the end of everything? ¿Cuál es el final de todo? What is the end of everything? Tell me, what is the end of everything? The letter G. Very good. The letter G. The end of everything is the letter G. Here we have it. G. Sí. Esta, esta es muy común en español también. O sea, ya yo he escuchado varias así como estas. So, yeah. Very good. That is a nice, nice, nice one. All right. Here we go with the next one. What part of the chicken has the most feathers? What part of the chicken has the most feathers. ¿Qué parte de la gallina o el pollo tiene más plumas? What part of the chicken has the most feathers? Uh -huh. Any ideas, guys? What part of the chicken has the most feathers? Bien. Sorry? La piel. The skin. That yeah. is very close. That is very, very close. Very close. Um, what do you think? Jorge, what might be your idea? What part of the chicken has the most feathers? ¿Qué parte de... uh -huh. I don't have the chance. I don't, don't have, have idea? idea. No. All right. Um, your skin, teacher? Sorry, oh, the skin. Probably your the skin. Wings. Ya lo dijimos, sí, ya lo dijimos tres veces. The skin. Lo único es la palabra nada más, la que no estamos usando, la palabra que es. Um, your skin, what? no? No, the outside. Oh, <laughs> the outside. <laughs> ¿Qué parte de la gallina tiene más plumas? Pues la parte de afuera. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so yeah, it was the outside actually. All right. Um, what has a button at the top? This is another one. What has a button at the top? See. Sí. ¿Qué tiene un fondo en la parte más alta o en la parte superior? ¿Qué tiene el fondo en la parte superior? What has a button at bottom, sorry, bottom, 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 at the top. What has a bottom at the top? Any ideas? ¿Qué cosa puede tener el fondo en la parte superior? Okay, this one is a tricky one. It's your legs. Sí. La cosa es que eh, a la parte pues, del medio, ¿verdad? Donde está the hips o donde está el, your, 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 your booty, sí. Um, normalmente se le llama el button. O sea, se le llama como el, 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 la parte eh, más um, abajo del cuerpo, digamos. O sea, cuando estamos hablando de eso. Y, o sea, esto se llama button, pues, el, el trasero, para que seamos más claros. Este, se, le, se le dice button. Entonces, y pues está justo arriba de nuestras piernas. So that's what has a button at the top. It's your legs. Muy bien. Uh, how far can you walk into the woods? Esta es mi favorita, creo que de todas. Es mi favorita. What, how far can you walk into the woods? ¿Qué tan adentro puedes caminar en, uh, en el bosque? How far can you walk 
into the woods. We are lost. <laughs> ¿Ah? ¿Kilómetros? <laughs> no, que we are lost. Estamos perdidos. Mm. Yeah, basically. Yeah, we're lost. Well, ya se acabó la hora, así que vamos a ver. What, how far can you walk into the woods? Basically, just halfway. Because after that, you're walking out of the woods. Sí, solo hasta la mitad. O sea, porque si ustedes van caminándose la mitad del bosque, eh, perdón, están caminando dentro del bosque, solo caminan hasta la mitad dentro del bosque. De ahí en adelante, están caminando fuera del bosque. So only halfway. Very good. Very, very nice. Um, so basically, that is the end of it. Tomorrow, we're going to have the last class of this week. So hopefully everything is going to go as planned. And uh, yeah, we're going to be able to meet here again. Um, for now, all I have to say is just thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And I also hope to see you tomorrow. So bye-bye for now and see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.